Hello everyone, my name is Sean Galloway. I'm the president of ProAct Safety and the host of Safety Culture Excellence. Recording this video here in beautiful St. Simons Island, Georgia. I wanted to share a quick model out of psychology to hopefully explain the rationale on why it's such a bad idea to drive and talk on the phone. Moreover, with this model, I hope to be able to convince you to never ever let your children drive and talk on the phone. So it's a quick model out of psychology that's called building habitual competency. And essentially what it means is trying to create competency over certain habits and trying to create specific habits within individuals. So real quickly, when somebody comes into your organization, they're, they're typically in a state that's called unconscious incompetence. Now I know that sounds derogatory, but what we mean by that is that they haven't, they don't have the experience yet and they don't have the information. So one of the first thing that we do is we give in, information to people. We give them education. And what that does is that takes them to a state called conscious incompetence. Now what that means is that they've got the information to be able to understand and know what to do, but they can't do it subconsciously yet. They can't just do it habitually. They can't do it without thinking. Autopilot, right? So typically what we do is we give people training. Now, think about it when you first learn how to drive. You go to driver's ed. Now, you weren't equipped to be able to drive safely and successfully yet, but you got some information to know how to drive, right? And the next thing you start doing is you go out and you go practice to where you start developing the templates. And when you're, when you're going through this, you're developing and going through a state that's called conscious competence. Now, what it means is that you've got some information you're starting to develop some of these templates here, but you've got the information, but you need to really think about how to do it in order to get it done. Now to get to that next level, you go through what's called reinforcement. There's kind of a principle in training that all training is only as effective as the reinforcement that follows it, right? So then you go to another state that's called unconscious competence. Now it's a different unconscious than the previous one. Here it means you've got the information, you know what to do, and you can do it without really thinking. Kind of autopilot, if you will. Now, ideally, we'd like for people to be thinking about things like safety at all times, but realistically, we also want them to develop specific habits, right? So, at this stage, you've gotten to the point where you can do something without really even thinking about it. And in one of my other videos, I talked about walking across the street. You don't really need a sound or somebody to stand there and remind you look both ways. It's something that happens at the subconscious. It's a habit. It's a template. Just like opening a door. When's the last time you really had to think about opening a door? They push, they pull, they twist, they turn. You don't really have to think about it. You go up to the door and you, you address the door, right? So, now let's think for a second. What about driving and talking on the phone? Now, there's a lot of parts of the brain, but the, for this, for the argument for this case here, let's talk about the subconscious and the conscious. Now, we talk a lot about multitasking. Realistically, you can't do two things consciously. You can't do two things that require conscious thought. You can do one thing in the subconscious and one in the conscious part of your brain. One you could do without really thinking, and one you could do that requires some thought, like walking and reading, for example. As long as there's nothing that's going to trip you up, and I'm not saying it's a good idea to walk while read, that's actually a, a, a not very effective safety strategy, but it's something that you could do. Now, if you are driving, and you've driven enough in your life, and you're talking on the phone, which part of your brain do you think is utilizing the conscious part of your brain, and which part of the brain is the task happening at the subconscious? If you're driving and talking on the phone and you're multitasking one part consciously, one part subconsciously, if you've driven enough, if you can drive on autopilot, scary, isn't it? If you can drive on autopilot, think about it. The part that you're doing consciously is paying attention to the conversation. The part that you're doing subconsciously is driving. Have you ever driven somewhere and you got the radio on and you get a little lost and you have to turn that radio down in order to be able to concentrate because that background noise is kind of annoying? It's kind of the same principle here. Now, when you've driven enough, a lot of people will say, I can drive and talk on the phone. It's not a big deal. But you can't consciously do two things at the same time. Now, the reason I talked about this model here is because if you can drive subconsciously, if you can drive on autopilot, which a lot of us do, have you ever gotten somewhere and realized, did I stop at the, all the way at that stop sign? Or did you ever start driving somewhere and all of a sudden realize you exited to go to work and you didn't mean to go to work, it's a weekend or your day off? The same kind of principle here. Now, 
Here's why it's such a bad idea for your kids to ever drive and talk on the phone. If you've been driving long enough to be able to drive on autopilot, you can do things like changing the radio station because you're driving on autopilot. I'm not saying it's a good idea, but it is possible. Now, kids, for the, for the other hand, kids, on the other hand, have not developed experiential templates to drive subconsciously. If somebody's 16, 17, 18, 19 years old, they haven't developed enough experiences to be able to drive on autopilot. When kids are driving and talking on the phone, they do not have effective templates to be able to drive on autopilot. I hope this is something you'll think about. And pay attention to when you're doing things. You are driving subconsciously, and sometimes you may be diverting your conscious attention towards something else, the area that applies that you're thinking about it. So I hope that'll be something that you'll consider. And if you take anything away from this, I hope that you'll consider how this model I just talked about applies to your own kids' safety. Please don't let them drive on autopilot. They don't have enough experience yet. Thanks a bunch for your time. On this quick video, if you'd like to see our weekly podcast, you can visit those at safetycultureexcellence.com, or you can find a lot of these uh, videos on YouTube, or you can find them on our firm's website at proactsafety.com. Thank you so much for all that you do, and have a great day.